Hey, what's going on everyone? Stranger here and welcome to another YouTube music production video. In today's video, we're going to be working on a bass sound like this. Now, I don't know what the official name for this bass sound is, but I call it the detune sub bass. You could call it the bubbly sub bass. Comment down below, let me know what you think this bass is called. But basically, it's used in a lot of popular drum and bass and jump up songs. Producers such as Shy FX, Break, and Serum have used it a lot in their tracks. It's quite a simple sound to make. But we're going to show it to you with a variety of synths today. But before we get started, please hit like and subscribe so you can stay updated on future videos and also help me a lot as well. And I'm going to say if we hit 400 likes, then I'm going to give you guys the project and presets for free so you can try it out on your own. So hit that like button and let's get started. Okay, so the first synth we're going to try it with is Serum since a lot of us have it. And simply the easiest way to make the sound is to use a sine wave and then we're going to enable oscillator B and also use a sine wave and we're going to detune, meaning one of them is going to play a different pitch. So usually it takes one or two semitones up to get that sound. And essentially what's happening is since each oscillator is playing a different pitch the oscillators are then phasing causing that in and out kind of sound so i'll play it for you notice on a spectroscope you can see the sand hovering up and down so that's the gist of it now you can fine tune it you can adjust the semitones so if you bring it down so it's only detuned by one semitone then it oscillates a bit slower. So faster with two semitones and then you can adjust the fine tuning as well to further finesse that wobble kind of sound. Now an essential step to this is then to add some pitch modulation to make that sub bass go up or down. And I use the LFOs and envelope to do this. So I'm going to go into LFO one and I'm going to enable this as an envelope. Okay. And now I'm going to switch this to either one or two bars should work. We just want it long enough to hear it trail. So let's try one bar first, and then we're going to go into the modulation matrix and we're going to say the source is LFO one. And then we're going to choose the destination as the global master tune. That just means the global pitch of our synth. And we're going to select anywhere between one to two. You can go higher if you want as well. It's really up to the sound that you want. So now we're going to go back to our LFO and we're going to bring this top guy over here. So now the LFO will pitch down as we play the note. Maybe we'll make it two bars so we can hear it. And we'll try adjusting the amount so you can hear it a little more drastically. You can even go up to seven tones. So that's a little more drastic. Personally, I prefer around two or three. So that's the basic step. However, you can take it a bit further and kind of modernize the sound and Break does this a lot. And what he does is he adds a layer of noise and then distorts the signal to get that fuzzy kind of sound. So let's try that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the noise section here, enable the noise. And what we want is white noise, which is that fuzzy kind of sound. And you can select that by going under the analog section and then selecting pretty much any one of these. I like the bright white, but you can try the other ones as well. So now we have some white noise playing through the signal. Now the next step is to go into your effects and then you turn on the distortion. Notice how it sounds a little more grungy. That noise really brings out that fuzziness and gives that warm feeling to your ears. It's quite a nice trick. Now a key feature to this bass sound is that when we play a higher pitch, 
that sound oscillates faster. And that's because of the pitches of the two oscillators. So notice if we play a lower pitch, it hovers more slowly. <laughs> And you can see that in the waveform as well as the little bumps are a bit closer on the higher pitch versus the lower pitch. And this is an old school jungle technique to make bass sounds and keep that in mind because we're going to be using that with a different technique in the next exercise. Okay, so now we're going to try a completely different technique and this is a more modern technique to replicate the sound. And what I'm going to do is just use one oscillator and again, I'm going to select a sine wave. And the secret of this one is to use an LFO to modulate the volume of that sine instead of using a detuned sign to create that wobble. So what I'm gonna do is then go into my LFO one and then I'm gonna sign it to the level of oscillator A. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the level of oscillator A and bring it down and then increase the LFO amount. So now let's hear what we got. Notice on the oscilloscope up here, we can see the waveform hover up and down. Now you can adjust the speed if you want. You can also use different shapes. Sometimes I prefer a more rounded sine wave. And actually I like to disable the BPM sync so then I can further fine tune how fast or slow it goes. So remember I mentioned in the previous exercise that to get that authentic jungle sound, you want the wobble to increase in frequency as we play higher notes. Now, currently, since we're using an LFO, whatever note we play, is going to play one consistent rate. So notice that the rate doesn't change as we change the key. And that may be desirable depending on the track, but if you want that authentic jungle sound, then we're gonna have to apply something that we call key tracking to the rate of your LFO. And how we do that is notice on the right of Serum here, we have the note section. Just make sure you have the note section enabled by clicking on the note tab. And this is the key tracker and it has an X and Y axis. So the X here would be this axis here and the higher the note, the uh, further up the X axis, the indicator will show. So notice the green line move up the X axis. And that just tells the key tracker that as you play higher to then send a higher amount to your modulation destination. So I'll just apply it and just show you how it works. So I'm gonna click on the crosshair and then bring this to your LFO rate. So what this means is that the higher I play on my keyboard, the faster the LFO rate. Now you may have to adjust the start rate first and then adjust the amount. So I might bring the rate down and adjust the amount like this. So notice when I'm playing a higher note, the rate increases. If you want that higher note to play even faster, then you'll have to adjust the amount and sometimes you also have to increase the start point as well. So that's sounding good. So now we have the key map to the LFO rate. Now the next step is we're gonna apply a secondary LFO to the pitch and we're gonna make this two bars just like we did in the previous exercise. So we're gonna enable this as an envelope and then we're going to the matrix, apply LFO two to the global master tune and then bring this up two or three semitones and then make sure that you set the envelope so you have it up like this. For certain bass sounds you might want it to have an ascending pitch instead so to do that you just move the point over here and now it'll ascend.
Okay, so now that we have the basic sound created, we can modernize it with some noise. But this time, instead of inserting the noise directly in Serum, I'm gonna try another technique, which is to layer it with a separate instance of Serum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on Serum here and hit Command or Control G. That just sends your instrument to an instrument rack. And then I'm gonna turn on the instrument rack here and then I'm gonna duplicate this, just hit Control or Command D. So now you have two serums. I'm gonna name this one as Noise. And then I'm actually gonna bring in an EQ and then I'm gonna remove the low frequency. So anywhere between 100 to 200 Hertz based on your taste. And then I'm gonna bring up the Noise Serum and then I'm gonna turn on the noise here. And then again, make sure you have the white noise. So go into analog and choose one of the white noises. They should just sound like fuzz. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply an additional parameter to modulate the noise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the same LFO, which is LFO one and adjust the level of the noise here. And then bring it down a bit. You might have to adjust. This just allows a more cleaner, more modern, precise version of our noise base. And just one final step for our serum, just remember to set the LFO to trigger mode. It just ensures that every time you trigger the note, it starts at the beginning of the LFO. And you're gonna wanna change that for the noise generator for serum too. So we're gonna just ensure that trigger is on. Now, at this point, you can apply distortion directly on Serum. You can go in here and then turn up the drive. However, I like to actually turn it off and then go outside of Serum. And I'm gonna actually pull in a saturator directly outside of this group. So this applies it to the entire group. I'm just going to bring down the levels a bit. It is a bit loud. Now, I, I like to increase the drive up pretty much to get that distorted sound, but it's based on how you like it. And then this base parameter determines how much of that saturation is applied to your lower frequencies. Essentially, if you increase it, you get a more distorted sound. <laughs> Okay, that sounded great, and that's the modern detuned sine bass with uh, with Serum. Okay, so the next synth we're gonna try out with is Massive because I have been getting a lot of requests to do some videos to show the original Massive, and I'll just go through it really quickly. Again, it's the same process. However, with Massive, I don't believe there is key tracking, so we will have to use the old school method. So just go into the oscillator and select a sine wave, and then move the wavetable position all the way counterclockwise because this is a sine to square so you want it fully as a sine and then you're going to enable oscillator too so bring that amplitude all the way up so you can actually hear it and then make that a sine wave as well okay great and now and now let's detune the second sine wave remember you can go either one or two semitones up depending on how you'd like it to sound Okay, great. Now there is an amplitude envelope here which trails down the volume. So if you want the volume to be consistent, just go into envelope four, which is dedicated to your amplitude and just bring the sustain level up, which is this knob here. And now you have a consistent tone. Okay, now we can apply some pitch modulation and we can use another envelope. We'll choose envelope three. Now, since there is no master tune from what I know about Massive, we're gonna have to apply the pitch modulation to each of the oscillators equally. So what that means is I'm gonna click this crosshair, drag it over to the pitch amount here, and then also bring it to oscillator two for the same parameter. And then this number here just means the amount and maybe we want it to modulate by three semitones. So increase that by three, and then we'll have to increase this one by three as well. Now make sure to set your sustain level all the way down so your pitch modulation reaches to the bottom note. 
and you may want to adjust the decay that just determines how long that pitch modulation takes to go from the highest to the lowest note okay great and if you want to modernize it you can add that noise and you can access the noise generator on the bottom left here where it says noise increase the amplitude now we're going to have to adjust the color of that noise so we're going to have to turn this dial up until we get that fuzzy sound Okay, and then the next step, we're gonna have to go into the insert effect here and then apply some distortion. So I like the clipper, hard clipper, and then just increase the drive and make sure your dry wet is adjusted. Now just one last trick, you might want to add a high pass filter to that noise to really shape that noise. So I'm going to say I'm going to send the noise to filter 2. So I'm going to drag the knob to F2 here and then I'm going to turn on high pass 4 and I'm going to increase the cutoff. So it takes off that low end. Now we're going to have to go into the routing and say that we're inserting the effect here at this point of the routing. It's just saying that we want this distortion to happen after we filter the noise. Okay, that's sounding great. So let's move on to the next sound. Okay, so now we're gonna make the sound of Massive X and we're gonna use the more new school method with just one oscillator. So I'm just gonna click on the wavetable position here and drag it counterclockwise all the way until we have the sine wave. And then I'm gonna go into my LFO4 here and then set this L4 to the amplitude of my entire synth engine. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring the level down and then click on the L4, click and drag up to increase the amount of the modulation. So now we have this. Now notice that we have this green line here and then there's this gray outline here. It just means we're in bipolar mode and the LFO will hover between these two extremes. Now I prefer the more unison mode where we only go from the center point up. So over here on the LFO section, I'm going to click on uni mode. And notice now here we only have this green line. And then I'm going to adjust the amount. Okay, great, and now I'm gonna choose the sine wave. Okay, now we're gonna apply some pitch modulation. So we're gonna choose envelope two here because envelope one is dedicated to amplitude. So I'm gonna click that on the crosshair above E2 and drag it over here to the overall pitch. So now E2 is mapped to the pitch and I'm gonna say set the amount to around three semitones. So now we have this. Great. So you can adjust the length of that DK on that pitch modulation just by dragging this DK amount. And you may want to adjust the shape of that curve here. Okay, so far so good. But now we may want to have that authentic jungle sound where we want the rate to fluctuate with the key. So we're gonna go into the key tracking, which is found under here. This is the key track for T1. And then we're gonna go back to LFO. So click on the LFO tab here. And then we're gonna assign T1 to the LFO rate, which is over here on the far left. And then we're gonna click and drag up under T1 to increase the modulation amount of T1. Okay, great. So now let's see how that sounds. You may have to adjust the center rate, so just change the rate here. Great, that's sounding good. So now we may want to add some noise to modernize that sound. So simply go to the first noise generator, which is this one here, increase the noise. Now we may want to add some clever filtering of the noise. So we're gonna go into the routing and just make sure only the noise is being filtered, which is the F here. So 
Currently, oscillator 1, 2, and a noise is first being sent to insert effect A, which is A here, and then it's getting filtered. However, we don't want oscillators to get filtered. So what we're going to do is just remove the filter from the entire routing. So I'm going to double click the lines here. So now the filter is on its own, and I'm going to drag it over here. And what I'm going to say is I'm going to remove the noise routing and then I'm gonna click here and send a noise to the filter. And then I'm gonna say, send the filter to insert A. And then we can say insert A then goes directly to insert B. So now you have a chain from insert A, B, and C, which refers to the effects here, A, B, and C. So now we can filter that noise without filtering everything else. So I'm gonna go into the blue monarch, which has the high pass filter and you can adjust the resonance. Okay, and then we can go into insert effect A and turn on the distortion. And you can turn the HQ to make it more higher quality. Okay, that's sounding great. Let's move on to the next synth. Okay, so I've also been getting a lot of requests for operator, so we'll try it with operator. And we're gonna use the old school method of detuning the sine waves here because we can't key track in operator. So what I'm gonna do is enable oscillator A and B, and I'll turn off B, C and D, and then I'll just increase the level of B. Okay, great. Now, operator uses FM synthesis. So right now, B is modulating A, and we don't actually want that. So we're going to go into the routing here. And you see here, they're in serial, which means the oscillators are modulating each other. What we're going to do is enable this routing, which means they're all running in parallel. And now each oscillator is playing on its own. And now we're going to adjust the pitch of oscillator B. Now we can't use the course because it's adjusting the ratio of the pitch as opposed to actual semitone. So instead we're going to go into fine and then just play by ear. Okay, that's great. So around 100 works. And now we're going to go into the pitch modulation section, which is over here. And then we're going to turn on pitch modulation. And what we're going to say is the peak will be at three semitones. And then we're going to go into the pitch envelope amount and make it 100%. So that's 100% of three semitones. And then you can adjust the decay here. You can click and drag up. That sounded good. And then you might want to modernize it by adding some noise. Now, the old school method would just be to turn on oscillator C and then adjust the level and then change it from sine wave to noise. And then we're going to go into audio effects and pull in a saturator and increase it all the way up. Bring down the level. And that sounds good. However, I like my noise a bit more tweaked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off that noise and then send operator into an instrument rack by hitting control or command G and then opening up the rack here. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to pull in, uh, well, we can pull in analog. We just need a simple noise generator. So I'm going to pull analog over and then I'm going to turn off oscillator two and use oscillator one as the noise. So I'm going to click a shape and select this icon here, which is the noise generator. <laughs> And then I'm just going to go into the amplitude envelope and just make sure there's no release so there's not that trickle after I, I let go of the note. And you might want to sustain all the way up so you have a consistent noise. And you can adjust the overall level of the noise if you like by dragging this volume here. Now I'm going to go into the filter and change it to a high pass. 
Increase the resonance a bit, adjust the cutoff frequency. Now I just want to turn off the velocity of that noise. So notice when I was hitting my notes a bit lightly, the noise was quieter. So just go into the amplitude envelope and just bring the envelope to velocity amount to zero. Now we have consistent noise and I'm just gonna bring down the level a bit. And then I'm gonna go back into operator and maybe adjust the pitch modulation. It's the slope. We might make a straighter slope, so make sure D slope is at 0%. Okay, so you can also do this in Wavetable and the Analog Synth in Ableton. However, it's a pretty much the exact same process. We're detuning the sine waves and adding pitch modulation so i'll let you guys see if you can figure it out and let me know how you do in the comments so we are now going to compare each sound now i've included a version with pigments although we didn't do pigments it is a newer synth and most of you guys don't have it yet however we could look into it in a future video i've also included a version with wavetable and analog and as i mentioned it is a similar process as operator so i'll let you guys figure it out and let me know how you guys do okay so let's hear each synth one by one <laughs> Okay, so that's it. So we did a comparison and I tried to get each one as close as possible. However, each synth engine is very different. So they will have its nuances. So let me know in the comments which one you like best. So that's pretty much it for today, guys. Again, there's two different ways to make the sound. You can go the old school method by detuning two sine waves and then the new school method where you use an LFO to modulate the volume of one oscillator and then you use some key tracking to modulate the rate of your LFO. And then you can add some noise to modernize that sound. So hope you guys liked that. Please let me know how you did in the comments. And again, if we can get up to 400 likes, then I'll release the project and presets for you guys for free. So thanks again for watching guys and keep practicing and I'll see you at the next video.